So we're just coming on with the UVs. Let's go back to our UV editor and let's just make this a little bit smaller. I mean, as you can, before I do shrink it, as you can see, there's lots of there's all lots of new elements that have been added in to help you tweak and edit your UVs. Um, all sorts from cutting to sewing to freeze, pinning and freezing to smearing. So there's lots of things there. But for this particular model, we don't need to worry about those at this stage. So I know I want these three elements to be on the same texture page. So what I'm going to do is click on this button here, which will display a texture. And this is built in. And what this will allow us to do is just see how distorted the texture is on the model. Now for the head, yes, we have these. The grids aren't exactly perfectly square, but for a spherical model like this, you wouldn't expect them to be. You know, we've got little little waves here and there, but that's not a big issue. I'm quite, I'm not, not too concerned about that. Like I said with the snake, we need to make the best use of the texture space. And if we're baking from ZBrush anyway, it doesn't really matter because the texture will just come through looking correct. So the head is fine for now. The scarf, again, as you can see here, they're nice evenly spaced squares. These are areas of the scarf here and here. We probably need to adjust those just to make better use of them. But to be honest, I'm looking at the shape of the UVs here and we do need to tweak those and adjust them as well. Um, now the body, the body does need a bit of tweaking. As you can see, the squares are quite distorted. They're almost squashed. So what we can do now is let's just adjust that by just scaling these UVs down. Let's just make that a bit bigger just so we can see. In fact, I'm just going to isolate that just so we can see them a little bit better. So that's much better. Let's just scale that in a little bit. So that's a bit more even. Just move that out of the way. So again, the scarf was fine, but I wasn't sure which way was up or down. So if I move this up like so, yep, yeah, that's the right way around. We can also start to think about where these are going to go on the page. So let's maybe put the scarf at the top there. The head, let's make that a little bit bigger. And while you're doing this, you also need to be thinking about which areas of the model are going to need the most detail. Because obviously, if you want finer detail, like we're going to need some finer details on the head, so maybe that needs a bit more space. So the body, let's just bring this down here. Now the body, we can be a little bit more flexible. I mean, we'd want it to fit in there. Let's just turn off this for a second. So I'm quite happy to just scale this in a little bit. Again, the beauty of baking the maps across is they will come across correctly, even if your UVs aren't, you know, the, aren't proportionally perfect. So we can get away with doing things like that, especially for the uh, his body there. And then finally, we just need to bring these in. Let's just scale that down. And ideally, we can see the squares on the scarf here. We want these here to match those too. Just in case if we add sort of a fabric detail onto the scarf here, we want it to be the same size on the scarf here. We don't want this area to have massive sort of uh, folds of cotton or, you know, whereas the one on here is smaller because it'll just look odd. So even though we maybe think, well, we want this to have bigger, a bigger space on the texture page, we still do need it to be roughly the same size as up here. Now, as long as it's the same size, 
I'm not too concerned. I do need to level some of these off. Just make that a bit bigger. So that's roughly how I want my UVs to be laid out. Now, let's just turn that off. Now there are issues, I mean, this is clearly overlapping here. So now we need to start thinking, okay, what can we sacrifice? What can we squash? What can we uh, stretch? And again, this comes down to what is going to be seen. From the front, you're not going to see the back of his head. And the back, the, this area here at the sides, they're not going to be seen very much either. So what we can maybe do is, let's just move this over. Let's just move that over one grid square just so we can see what we're doing. We could maybe say, well, the back of the head isn't going to be seen very much. So let's just squash that down and claim back a bit of that texture space. We can do the same with the sides of the head. So let's just squash that in because towards the back of the head, you're not going to see that either. Squash that in there. So let's move this back over. And as you can see, that's claimed a bit more space back. So we could use that now to make the head bigger. Just a touch bigger. If we move this over like so. You know, we could do little cheats like that just to make everything fit on. Like I say, if you're going to have the head as it, on its own texture page, then this is all irrelevant. But this is just, I wanted to save some texture space. So I wanted these three elements all on the same page. So from here, it's just a case of tweaking these UVs to get a nice layout. One other um, thing we need to change, if I open up the attribute editor, and that is the way that smooth mesh is affecting these elements. So if we go to our smooth mesh here, we can see that it's using the global subdivision method, which is the open subdiv Catmull Clark, which is absolutely fine. So we need to come down to the open subdiv controls and we need to adjust some of these just to um, play around with, with the border edges really. At the moment, some of them are quite angular. So as you can see, if we set the UV boundary smoothing to none, everything goes back to as if it's not been smoothed. Setting it to preserve edges and corners, you'll notice that rounded that area off there. So when this model gets smoothed in ZBrush, the UVs will be smoothed as well. So we need to sort of try and represent that in this. Preserve edges, if you notice, just smooth that edge off even more there. So that's pretty much what we're looking for. So we just want to smooth the edges of those UVs. So let's go to the scarf and do the same. Preserve edges. And if you see there, if you watch this, this bit of the scarf looks a bit messy. We set it to none. If you see how it was previously, it's quite angular. There's some bits overlapping. Just by setting that to preserve edges, like so. It's opened it up and it's smoothed it out. Now it's still not perfect because we want this to be a little bit more uniform in shape for when we're baking our details across. But all we need to do now is just go in like so. Maybe use these align tools just to line that up like so. We could maybe match these up just using the align tools just to go in. Just tidy up some of these edges just making it a bit more uniform, which when we come to bake our textures will just help help them come across in a much better way. You know, and then just select the edges there and just square those off too. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to leave this, leave this lovely scene, And I'm just going to play around with the UVs a little bit more and then we'll, we'll just pick, pick it up in the next video and start preparing to export to ZBrush.